My name is Fred Mednick. I founded the organization Teachers Without Borders, and I'm a professor of education sciences at the Free University of Brussels. This module is all about cognitive bias. The quickest way to describe a cognitive bias is that it's a shortcut to sensory overload. It's efficient, there's no question about that, but it can also be ineffective and dangerous. There's lots of focus these days uh, on identifying internal biases and the tools to correct for them. That's 90% of the field. But there's also a competing urge to depend more on external technologies to skip and correct for human fallibility. The key is to find the happy and most effective medium. It's not easy. Our lives are increasingly complex. Technology is more sophisticated than ever, and the stakes are much, much higher. We all get it. I mean, you're in the business of addressing the urgency of tyranny. The challenge is that you're working under conditions that you can best characterize as the tyranny of the urgent. To that end, I want to introduce you to the Cognitive Bias Codex. There are 180 of them so far and growing. We're going to focus on the four quadrants of it, each of which has subcomponents and those fan out to the biases themselves. When we have too much information, shortcuts take over. We want to anchor um, in what we know or rely on something certain or congruent. If there's not enough meaning, we fill in the blanks with our biases. With so much information to remember, we get suggestible and super selective. We level out some information and sharpen others, and it, it makes it difficult to distinguish between noise and signal. In quadrant four, or the need to act fast, think of Occam's razor uh, bias in which things being equal, uh, it's just about keeping things simple. Or how about this one? The Peltzman effect. The more security you put in place, the more you encourage risky behavior. Here are some classics like patterns, patterns everywhere. Man, I hate the Yankees. Yeah, you are all villains to me because I happen to live in this region of the country. Yeah! yeah. The least you can do is level with me. What are my chances? Not good. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. Remember how long you studied for that bar? How hard you worked? All that effort. You're just going to toss it away? That's the sunk cost fallacy. Wait, the what? The fallacy of sunk cost. It's what gamblers do. They throw good money after bad, thinking they can turn their luck around. It's like, I've already spent this much money or time or whatever. I got to keep going. No, there's no reward at the end of this game. In the last year, ChatGPT has grabbed all the headlines, and there's much more. Take a good, hard look at this. I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am not even a human being? Would you believe me? What is your perception of reality? Is it the ability to capture, process, and make sense of the information our senses receive? If you can see, hear, taste, or smell something, does that make it real? Or is it simply the ability to feel? I would like to welcome you to the era of synthetic reality. Now, what do you see? I am not AI based, but she is. I am a computer generated person that doesn't exist in reality. AI has spawned poor facial recognition and gender bias in hiring, as well as hate speech and profiling. Machines are not only picking up our biases, they are extending them. Once again, garbage in and garbage out. When I show this image I snapped in Kabul, Afghanistan, some people see the women in burqas, some see the women in modern dress, and still others see the mannequins in the wedding dresses. 
A more encompassing picture would see all that as well as the gates are the opening or closing metaphorically on women in Afghanistan. Here's an example familiar to heart surgeons. A certain procedure during open heart surgery that must be completed in 30 seconds or the patient risks death. Residents practice and practice in these lab settings and they learn all the tools and the procedures. And yet many surgeons still have to exhort their first year residents to say, remember this, the next procedure takes 30 seconds. You know the stakes, so take your time. Now this may sound counterintuitive. The chief surgeon's point is this, here are the parameters. Don't succumb to the tyranny of the urgent because that's when most mistakes are made. A systems thinking approach was developed by Daniel Kahneman, a Nobel laureate in economic sciences and the author of the book called Thinking Fast and Slow. He makes an important distinction in cognitive bias between level one thinking, which is automatic, and level two thinking, which is conscious. CRAP is a checklist that helps us check the currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose of the information we receive and choose to report. It asks you to make a distinction between correlation causation, for instance, along with intention and bias. It's important to draw lessons from past catastrophes. But what if we work backward from a disaster 10 years from now? Was it bad data, rushed to judgment, misguided assumptions, facts twisted into our biases? Did we not see the black swans and weak signals and wild cards? What if the goal is not just survival or resilience, but strength? The same Nicholas Taleb's book, Anti-Fragile, addresses just that. While data could be prejudiced, we can be culturally clueless in our own interpretations. Scientists say that we can't read faces, but we can fine-tune our understanding of language, values, norms, and our own biases. Cynicism is often the standard for understanding linear and nonlinear contexts. Whether it's dynamic or emerging, how to examine levels of complexity, how to frame your challenges and process by looking for patterns, arguments, changeability, cause and effect relations, ambiguity, and making sense of the seen and unforeseen. Klein's data frame of sense making can help make sense of our experiences and assessments of facts in order to test our hypotheses and challenge our biases and drivers as we construct a narrative. And while we're speaking of narratives, there are frameworks for countering bias by honing skills around assessment, including building a story and the potential that things may go in several equally plausible directions. You'll identify a top security challenge Europe will face in 2025. Each dot here represents 10 people. This was posted six years before the Russian war on Ukraine. Your first take on the security challenge. A revision based upon one cognitive bias quadrant.
a third version that considers one framework or model, and sharing with at least three colleagues. Though I'm loath to give advice about something like this, the research says, first, don't question your intelligence, just your assumptions, reactions, and interpretations. To use frameworks as filters if you have the time, not just as formulas, and practice intellectual humility because solo heroism is a recipe for disaster. Think two pay grades above and below you and create an environment for openness and reflection, not just loyalty. Thanks for hanging in there, everyone, and I'll see you online. Bye-bye.